Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to 2021. We're gonna get the first upload of the new year kicked off by working on the 2500 Suburban. Now this thing's powered by a big block and as you can see by the dirt on the outside, I have been driving and enjoying it, but today we're gonna to be focusing on the interior. Now when I was first shopping for a Suburban, I really wanted to find one with front bucket seats and a floor console, but as you can see, we got the split bench and the flip down armrest thingy. Now, sure, you can fit nine people in this truck, but I don't know nine people in Utah, so I have no need for nine seats. Plus, I've always liked the bucket seats better. So I went online, I did a little bit of shopping, and I scored a couple of used parts. And I grabbed a front pair of bucket seats. Now, these are cloth, but they're in really, really good shape. A lot of these that you'll find, they can be a little bit beat up. And really, the only damage on these ones are right here, and this is really common, is they're just a little bit worn on this corner where you know the driver's gonna slide in and out of the truck, but they're in really, really good shape, so they're going in. I also grabbed a full-length ceiling console as well as a replacement ashtray and a dome light because mine is missing the bezel. Now, the great thing about these old uh, GMT 400 trucks is they made millions of them, and there's tons of them in junkyards all across the country. So, if you get a truck and it's got something on the inside that you really don't like, it's super easy to find new parts that you can swap out to make it exactly how you want it. I think the best part is between all those parts I showed you, I think I only spent like 110 or 120 bucks. So, you know, I've got no complaints at all and it's totally worth the effort to just change it up to make it how I want. So I've got the old seats out and the carpet is vacuumed up. And so far this job has been super easy because everything just basically unbolts. Now, if you are going from a bench or a split bench to bucket seats, you only need two seat belts. So that means you've got to figure out something to do with the old center seat belt. And I definitely would not tell you just to cut it off right where the cable meets the base and then just slice through the seat belt where it kind of loops through on the driver's side. But you could probably figure out what you want to do there. Now, as far as bolting in the passenger side seat, it is a direct bolt-in arrangement because the old seat and the new seat are basically the same exact thing minus the little flip-down armrest there. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind if you're gonna be using, say, a Suburban or a Tahoe seat in a extended cab Chevy truck. That's actually what I did on my last extended cab, the Black 96. I used a set of Suburban seats in it, but the only thing that won't work like an original bucket seat extended cab truck is how the seats flip ahead to get access into the rear. The trucks had a little lever, I believe it was right here, you flipped it ahead and the back of the seat would fold forward and the whole seat would slide ahead a lot on the track to allow the passenger to kind of get in the extended cab part of the truck. Now the Suburban seats will bolt into an extended cab truck in the same exact way. Like I said, you just lose that functionality. The driver side original seat is the widest portion that has the little center jump seat attached. So it mounts to the floor in four different places. Two in the center, and that's ultimately gonna be covered by the center console whenever I get it. And two on the outside right here. Now these two are gonna work perfectly for the new seats that I've got. So that means all I've gotta do is put two new mounting holes right on this section right through here. Now the back one, that's actually kind of nice because the mount boss and threaded insert is actually already welded to the bottom of the floor pan. You've just got to make a small hole through the sheet metal so you can get a bolt threaded in there. Now it will be a little bit tricky to drill up through there without damaging the threads, but if you're careful, make a pilot hole from the bottom up and then drill the rest of the hole from the top down, I think we'll be able to get it, but we'll see how that goes. Now the front mounting hole right through there there's actually no metal boss or big giant threaded insert welded onto the bottom of the floor pan, but they were nice enough to make a little tiny dimple in the bottom of the floor pan that'll just give us the location of where that mount needs to go. So then I'll just drill a hole, uh, run a bolt through there and put a big fender washer or something really sturdy on the bottom just to give it a little bit extra reinforcement. But 
All we got to do really is drill a couple holes and we get these seats bolted back in the Suburban. Once I've got the two holes drilled for the driver's side seat, basically everything fell into place and it looks just like a factory truck. And even though I don't even have the console in there yet, it looks a million times better than that old raggedy split bench seat with the flip up console. Now, a couple things I'm not sure if I mentioned yet or not. Number one, the carpet. Obviously, it looks really, really nasty. That's just all soda spills or coffee spills or whatever. And once it warms up a little bit later on this spring, I'll show you how I take care of that. Because basically what I do is I just remove the entire carpet from the truck and I'll lay it out in the driveway, soak it with kind of the shampoo and then just pressure wash it. And a lot of those stains will just kind of rinse right out and it looks a million times better. But obviously you've got to let it sit in the sun for a day or two just to make sure it dries out fully before you put, uh, put it back in the truck. Number two, the rear seats, they're made from leather or whatever leather substitute that they used back in the day. So obviously the two materials don't match because the front seats, like I mentioned, are cloth. But it doesn't really bother me for the time being because mainly what I wanted was bucket seats. But I am on the lookout for a good cloth rear set. So let me know if you have them. So now it's time to move on to the overhead console. Now, GM put these mostly in Tahoes and Suburbans. As far as I'm aware, they never put them into an extended cab or regular cab truck. But it's really easy to add them. In fact, the extended cab truck, I did that on my last 96 as well as I did the Tahoe or Suburban front seats. Um, extended cabs, you can add them really easily because there's two little square uh, notches that are cut into the roof kind of underneath the headliner that the rear tab of the overhead console kind of grab into to hold it up. In the front there's just a single hole that you need a screw and a clip to attach to. Now because this truck does have the overhead switch console that little screw right there is already in place so that'll help me locate it but a quick tip, if you're going to a junkyard and if you want to put an overhead console in your truck, just to make sure you get things in the right you know, location, take a razor knife with you and just cut a big chunk of the headliner out. That way you have a template for where the holes need to be. And the metal and the roof, I'll show you that in just a minute, but the holes in an extended cab truck are already there. From what I remember, uh, regular cab trucks, you have to do some metal modification to the inside of the roof structure to get the overhead console in. But extended and crew cab pickup trucks, as well as obviously Tahoe's and Suburbans, all the holes should already be there.
There are three chunks in total you're going to have to cut out of the headliner to get the full length console in place. The rear two I kind of mentioned earlier, um, that's to access the little square in the inner metal structure, that's the inner right there and the outer roof right there. And that's what the rear two tabs of the console right there kind of grab into. And the front hole, I had to extend it a little bit, or if you're going from an extended cab truck with no console, you have to cut this entire hole. Um, and that's because this little hump right here, that kind of sticks up above, you can kind of see like that, it sticks up above the surface. So that's for the dome light to go up in. Now, obviously there are some wires up there that you want to be careful of. And I did have to switch over my HVAC controls, but lucky day, this plug right here, that's for the map lights. The Suburban already has the power harness for the map lights in place. So everything is gonna work exactly like it did from the factory or exactly like it would have from the factory if this was an option. With a minimal investment in parts, a quick road trip to the junkyard, and then an afternoon's worth of time of bolting the stuff in, we've transformed how the Suburban looks. And my favorite part is everything is a direct bolt in because all the attachment points are already there, like for the driver's side bucket seat and the overhead console. And it just kind of looks like a more deluxe version of a Suburban. We got the bucket seats, we've got the full length overhead console, and then I repaired all the broken stuff like the dome light and the ashtray, so it's looking good. Now I do still need to find the front floor console, that's kind of eluding me at the moment, and then eventually I will get a cloth rear set of seats to match the front, but it's looking good, I'm happy, and I'm ready to put some more miles on it because it's just those little things that make the truck more enjoyable, and it kind of makes you want to drive the truck even more. Now I want to say thank you guys for watching, and if you haven't already, help me out. Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more up-to-date content on both the OBS Suburban and the Ugly Truck, the 8.1 swapped turbocharged 2000 Silverado. My name's LT, and I'll catch you guys on the next upload. What if you did what? What if you did um, one of these onto one of these, and then the next one onto the other one? Would that work? Maybe. You should try it. But I need to solder to solder it up.